a kid? Oh my god, there's another little kid. There's a kid? There's not a day that I don't think about myself. I am sorry that you will never get to be able to tell your son I love you and hear him say it back. In September 2018, Todd Grudzinski, who had a history of DUI offenses, was involved in a devastating crash in Lakewood. The incident claimed the life of 25-year-old Angela Wimmer, a young woman who had her whole life ahead of her. As a result of his actions, Todd was detained and charged to court. As if Todd's crime was not outrageous enough, his reaction to his sentence was even more dramatic. The courtroom was filled with tense emotions as the victims of the accident shared their heart-wrenching stories. It took a lot um, for me to be able to even drive again. Um. However, Todd's friends and family presented a different perspective amidst the anguish. They emphasized that he wasn't entirely a monster and claimed he harbored genuine remorse. I've only known him to be caring and kind and helpful. He has expressed his complete contempt for himself. He has stated how much he regrets the accident and would do anything, anything, to be able to change places with the victim. When allowed to address the court, Todd expressed sincere regret for his actions and apologized to Angela's family. I am so remorseful and so sorry that I did what I did. A few things I want to address real quick before I get into that. The victim has passed away because of my ignorance and I am so truly sorry to the family, to everybody else affected, to Miss Martinez, and I am so sorry for how much I am hurting you, and I hope you heal fast. And we'll never get behind a wheel again. Call an Uber, call a taxi, or better yet, give up drinking. His six previous DUI convictions didn't work in his favor during the proceedings. The judge had to consider the gravity of the situation and the repeated offenses. Consequently, the judge handed down the maximum punishment, life in prison without the possibility of parole. Todd's reaction to his sentence was shocking and his accident resulted in a life being lost. But what happens when not just one life is taken, but two? Like in the case of Carlo Navarro, who is facing charges for second degree murder and one count of vehicular manslaughter in Long Beach, California. In 2019, on Halloween night, when people typically enjoy trick-or-treating and spooky festivities, Navarro took things to the extreme. On this particular night, tragedy struck near Los Cerritos Park. Navarro, under the influence of substances, collided with the Awaida family as they innocently walked home. The love that, that my sister's family, our family, has given, and now's our time to think about them. It's a very close community here, and everyone's been deeply affected. The Awaida family, consisting of Joseph Awaida, 30 years old, and Raihan Dakil, 32 years old, and their young son, three-year-old Omar, lost their lives that fateful night. A kid? Oh my God, there's another little kid. There's a kid? The impact of their loss will be felt for years to come. It's heartbreaking to grasp that three precious lives were abruptly taken away due to one unfortunate decision. Interestingly, despite his initial shock and irresponsibility, Navarro didn't flee the scene as one might expect. Instead, he stayed put and, during police interviews, took immediate responsibility for his actions. This act of accountability didn't go unnoticed, even by Judge Lisecki, who acknowledged Navarro's remorse. It's a small glimmer of maturity in an otherwise devastating story. As you can see, Judge Laura Lisecki delivered the expected verdict. Navarro was convicted on all charges and sentenced to 25 years to life behind bars. However, this wasn't the only time a convict freaked out during their sentencing. Take, for example, the case of Grace Coleman, who is facing multiple charges, including second-degree murder, driving under the influence, causing injury, driving with a blood alcohol content over the legal limit, and failing to stop at a hit-and-run involving injury and death in Newport Beach, California. Coleman is in court for causing the death of a couple, 27-year-old Henry Eduardo Saldana Mejia and his 28-year-old wife, Gabriela Andrade, in a drunk driving collision on December 8, 2020. Reports indicated that Coleman's blood alcohol level was nearly three times the legal limit when she crashed her vehicle into the family's Nissan Versa at the intersection of Newport Coast Drive and Pelican Hills Road South. 
Prosecutors suggested that Coleman may have run a red light at the time of the accident. It was revealed that she had resumed driving her car after being given a ride home. The couple's three daughters, who were also in the car, suffered injuries, with all of them breaking their legs, and the five-year-old sustaining two broken arms. In an emotional statement, the family told the courtroom how the incident affected them. December 9th, 2020, I received a phone call to give me the saddest news. It was the worst thing that I could have heard, a pain that I will never be able to overcome. My name is Emma Sofia. I write this letter because I miss my mom. My name is Elena. I miss my mom and my dad. I feel sad when the accident happened. Those beautiful girls will never have their parents from the major moments of their lives. Who is going to walk them down the aisle if they ever get married? Who is going to dance with them at their quinceañera? While the crimes committed by Coleman were abhorrent, her courtroom conduct will leave you speechless. During the trial, Coleman's defense attorney, Paul Meyer, stated that she fully accepted responsibility for the tragedy before the judge. The judge himself told Coleman exactly how he felt. I sense strongly that they would want you to continue to live your life with joy to appreciate every day. Ultimately, Coleman was sentenced to 21 years to life in prison for her actions. However, Coleman wasn't the first person to be emotional in court, like in the case of Tanner Dashner. I am sorry that you will never get to be able to tell your son, I love you, and hear him say it back. Facing charges for manslaughter in Fort Pierce, Florida. In a tragic incident in November 2018, Tanner Dashner, allegedly driving at an astonishing speed of 97 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone, crashed into the back of a Dodge Dakota at Midway Road, resulting in a devastating chain of events. You can see the moment Dashner's car collided with the victim's car and burst into flames. Look again as Dashner's car plowed through the road, hitting one car off of the road before crashing into the victim's car at full speed. Bystanders shared videos of the immediate aftermath of the crash. Tragically, the crash claimed the lives of five individuals, Kadan Tillett, the driver of the Dodge, as well as passengers Alexis Cheney, Anthony Victor, Anthony Martin, and Darian Douglas. However, amidst the tragedy, a courageous bystander managed to rescue a 14-year-old girl named Ariana Stanberry from the burning wreckage, displaying an act of true heroism. At the time of the crash, Dashner's blood alcohol content was measured at 0.274% over three times the legal limit. The impact of the collision involved the Dodge, a BMW, and resulted in the Dodge's gas tank catching fire. Dashner was charged with five counts each of DUI manslaughter. As if Dashner's crime was not outrageous enough, his reaction to his sentence was even more dramatic. During the trial, some family members of the victims called for a life sentence, but the judge's ruling aligned with the prosecution's request. The courtroom was filled with emotions as relatives shared their heart-wrenching stories, seeking closure and justice. Closure. We're just ready to move on, but it's behind us. It'll never be forgotten, so we just have to be strong. And um, we've been through a great deal, all of us. And so we're just ready to put this past us. Dashner was also given opportunity to speak. To the family of Anthony Victor, I am sorry. To the family of Anthony Martin, I am sorry. To the family of Darian Douglas, I am sorry. To the family of Keaton Tillett, I am sorry. To the family of Alexis Cheney, I am sorry. To Ariana Stanberry, I am sorry. The judge showed no sympathy for Dashner's defense, which claimed he had autism spectrum disorder and brain issues. The evidence did not support this argument, especially given that Dashner had even posted a selfie with the word sloshed written on it. Judge Mackimson sentenced Dashner to serve 14 and a half years for each of the five DUI manslaughter charges, with credit for nearly 1,300 days already served. As the terms will be consecutive, Dashner will serve a total of 72 and a half years. However, while some may attribute Dashner's reaction to brain issues, it pales in comparison to the unfathomable behavior of Jeffrey Levi. 
I wish and pray that I could do or say something to change what's happened, but I can't. And I have to live with that forever. Who is facing multiple charges, including second degree murder, hit and run, and gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated in San Diego, California. In 2018, a heavily intoxicated Levi made the disastrous choice to get behind the wheel of his Mustang. Disregarding any sense of responsibility, he recklessly sped over 100 miles per hour on Interstate 15, putting his own life and innocent lives in grave danger. His Mustang collided with a Toyota Corolla carrying Felix, Jesus Dominguez, and Giovanna Dominguez. The impact was so severe that it left the Corolla disabled in the middle of the freeway, and tragically, it was then struck by an SUV driven by an off-duty San Diego police sergeant. The already horrific situation took an even darker turn as the sedan burst into flames, claiming the lives of Felix and Jesus Dominguez. You could see the car burning after the crash. To make matters worse, this wasn't Levi's first offense. He had a prior DUI conviction dating back to 2007, revealing a troubling pattern of poor decision-making regarding driving. However, Levi admitted his wrongdoing in court and expressed remorse for his actions. Here, you can see him telling the court about his battle with alcoholism and his unsuccessful attempts at rehabilitation. I made very serious mistakes with detrimental consequences. I relapsed. I think of Jesus, Isaac, Giovanna, and their friends and family every day. I wish and pray that I could do or say something to change what's happened, but I can't. And I have to live with that forever. It was a remarkable shift from his initial desperate act of fleeing the scene after colliding with the victim's car. Judge Weber addressed Levi directly, reminding him of the lives he had tragically cut short, the permanent injuries he caused, and the multiple fatal decisions he made on that fateful night. I want to remind you, Mr. Levi, because I know that you're going to be living with us for the rest of your life, that you killed these two young people and burned them to death. You permanently maimed another young woman and injured an officer. But my, by my count, you made four fatal decisions on that night. It served as a stark reminder of the severe consequences that one's actions can have. Despite the dark cloud hanging over this story, there was a glimmer of hope. Brave Good Samaritans rescued and saved Giovanna, although she suffered severe injuries. The aftermath of Levi's actions extended even further, as the brave officer, Sergeant Raymond Rowe, was also injured, adding complexity to the situation. The victim's families filed a civil lawsuit against Levi, the city of San Diego, and Sergeant Rowe. Judge Weber sentenced Levi to a staggering 30 years to life in prison. Additionally, she added an extra four years for the crash. However, just when you thought you've seen it all, another convict surpasses Levi's remorseful courtroom display. Enter Jorge Solis. From my heart, I never saw my actions. A 20-year-old who's facing multiple charges, including first-degree homicide by vehicle, driving under the influence of alcohol while under the age of 21, possession of alcohol by a minor, and driving with a suspended or revoked license in Atlanta, Georgia. Solis is standing trial for a tragic collision that took the lives of several innocent passengers. Despite his suspended driver's license, Solis chose to operate his Ford F-350 and traveled northbound in the southbound lanes of I-75, setting the stage for this tragic collision. The incident occurred on Father's Day at 5 a.m. and resulted in the devastating loss of seven-year-old Hallie Young, eight-year-old Cabrin Osborne, and 49-year-old Michael Furlow. The grief-stricken mother of the children was left devastated. She even contemplated killing herself. There's not a day that I don't think about killing myself. I cannot tell you today that I am a Christian without flinching and disgust at what God has done to me. The father wasn't any better off. We got to give his birthday presents for nothing in the past week and a half for a birthday. Nor were the rest of the family. Our families will never be the same again because of what he did in one moment. In a shocking revelation, it was disclosed by Atlanta Fulton County District Attorney Paul L. Howard that Solis had a blood alcohol level of 0.125, well above the legal limit. When authorities arrived at the scene, they found Solis passed out, leaning on the median of the expressway. Witnesses also attested to his highly intoxicated state, detecting the strong odor of alcohol emanating from him. Also, 
They observed his attempt to deceive the authorities by sliding across the seat and exiting the vehicle through the passenger side, as if he had not been the driver. Solis, who was already on probation for a previous DUI conviction, faced a range of charges and ultimately pleaded guilty to multiple offenses. However, he apologized for his actions. The atmosphere in the courtroom was filled with sorrow as Fulton County Judge Henry Newkirk delivered the verdict. Solis was sentenced to serve 50 years of a 75-year prison term, ensuring he would spend decades behind bars. However, Solis wasn't the first person to show remorse in court, like in the case of Charlicia Pelt. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He was facing several charges related to driving under the influence in Detroit. Charlicia Pelt, a mother who was involved in a tragic drunk driving crash that claimed the life of her three-year-old son, is now in court to face the consequences of her actions. It was revealed that Pelt was intoxicated when she ran a red light at the Seven Mile and Hayes intersection resulting in a collision with another vehicle. He was behind me, I look in my rear view and boom. She must have been going at least 70, 80 miles per hour. However, the true shock lies not in the crime itself, but in Pelt's jaw-dropping behavior during the sentencing. In an emotional hearing, Pelt pleaded guilty to the charges of drunk driving causing death and child abuse. The court was filled with teary-eyed people as Michael Jones, the child's father, shared his indescribable anguish. August 9th. I got a call from a stranger telling me that my son was in an accident. Same time, the hospital called me and told me my son was fighting for his life. I didn't understand what was going on. I don't know what else to say to this point. I don't understand none of this. Ms. Pelt know what my son meant to me. Jones recounted the heartbreaking sight of his baby boy in the hospital, bearing tire marks on his arms and face. It is a pain that no parent should ever have to endure. With tears in her eyes, Pelt expressed deep remorse during her sentencing. She offered heartfelt apologies to her family, but failed to take full responsibility for her actions, claiming she did everything right. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I promise I didn't mean it. I know I love my baby so much. I'm being put out there like I'm just a neglected parent, and I know it was wrong, but I I did everything right by my kids. Tried my hardest if I didn't. But I apologize to everybody it hurt. Michael family on his dad's side, my family, and anybody that loved Michael. Considering the plea agreement and Pelt's participation in treatment programs, the judge gave her a sentence of 3 to 15 years. The court reached the decision after careful consideration of the circumstances surrounding the case and the potential for rehabilitation. However, while Pelt's reaction could certainly be dismissed as a result of grief, the same can't be said for the case of 29-year-old Bonnie Duarte, who is facing charges for three counts of second-degree murder and one count of driving under the influence, causing great bodily injury in California. On March 29, 2018, during the spring break of three Las Vegas teens, Bonnie's Hyundai Sonata collided with a stationary Toyota Corolla occupied by the victims at a red light on Pacific Coast Highway and Magnolia Street. The impact was devastating, propelling the Toyota into a pole and igniting a fire. You could see the aftermath of the deadly crash. Tragically, three young lives were lost in the collision. Dylan Mack, 18, Brooke Holly, 17, and AJ Rossi, also 17. Another occupant, Alexis Varga, suffered severe injuries. The courtroom was filled with emotion as victim impact statements were delivered, illustrating the profound and lasting impact of Bonnie's actions. Listen to the father of one of the victims. It doesn't matter. My daughter can't do anything. My daughter died horrifically. While the crimes committed by Bonnie were abhorrent, her courtroom conduct will leave you speechless. During the trial, it was revealed that Bonnie had a prior DUI arrest, which should have served as a wake-up call. However, she disregarded the consequences and decided to drink and drive again. The pain of losing loved ones to such a senseless act of drunk driving was tearily expressed by Ali Rossi's father. There isn't anything that will ever fill this empty hole in my soul. 
I wish this really was just a nightmare. Because then we could all just wake up. Ali Rossi's older sister also reserved some choice words for Bonnie. The decision that Betty Duarte made that night to drink and get into a vehicle and drive changed my family's world. She had no regard for human life or regard for the effects it could have on others. She knew about Uber and Lyft, but she chose to drive twice that night. In a heartfelt statement, Bonnie called the collision a horrible accident that forever changed countless lives. She expressed remorse and regret, acknowledging the selfishness of her decision and the profound consequences it brought upon others. However, she understood that her words could never bring closure to the tragedy she caused and took full responsibility for her actions. At this point, I don't even know who's going to raise my children or if I'm ever going to be able to ever hug them again or comfort them. No one is to blame but me. I take responsibility. I wasn't in the right state of mind mentally and emotionally. I just want to say that I'm truly sorry. And maybe one day you will forgive me. After a lengthy legal battle, the jury found Bonnie Duarte guilty on all charges. Three counts of second-degree murder and one count of driving under the influence causing great bodily injury. Judge Pear aimed to send a strong message to the community that such reckless behavior would not be tolerated. Bonnie Duarte has been sentenced to 45 years to life behind bars for the three counts of murder. Additionally, she received a six-year sentence for the DUI charge, causing injury to Alexis Vargas. However, while Bonnie's behavior was emotional, it's nothing compared to the utter mayhem caused by Olivia Colbreth in court. This is Olivia Carolee Colbreth. No words. No words can convey how my heart feels. Who's facing charges for DUI-related offenses in Los Angeles, California. The 26-year-old Colbreth had been drinking and driving in the early morning of February 9th, 2014. Shockingly, she had become a new mother just 11 days before the incident. Investigators reported that Colbreth was driving at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour against oncoming traffic on the 57 and 60 freeways. The collision was devastating as Colbreth's vehicle collided with a Ford Explorer on the westbound 60 freeway. Tragically, four individuals from three generations of the same family lost their lives in the SUV. I saw the window shattered with my grandmother's wheelchair in the back. I felt like my heart was ripped out of my chest and burned. Colbreth's sister and her best friend, passengers in her Camaro, also lost their lives in the three-vehicle pileup. The California Highway Patrol officers who responded to the scene described it as one of the worst crashes they had ever encountered. Following the crash, Colbreth's blood alcohol content was measured at 0.15%, which is nearly twice the legal limit. Prosecutors presented evidence during the trial that Colbreth had a previous DUI arrest, resulting in a collision. The court had warned her about the dangers of driving under the influence. It emphasized that such behavior could lead to murder charges. Colbreth's young son, now five years old, has only known his mother to be behind bars. Colbreth's mother told the court how the boy reacts when he visits his mom in prison. When she's coming home, he jumps up on the little shelf and tries to move the glass. In a heartbreaking statement, Colbreth expressed that regardless of the prison time, she would continue to punish herself for the rest of her life. No words. No words can convey how my heart feels. I was wrong. I was so wrong. Colbreth was convicted after pleading no contest to six counts of second-degree murder, opting to avoid a trial that would have further traumatized the grieving families of the victims. Colbreth was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison, a sentence that brought some closure to the families affected by the tragedy. If you thought these reactions were shocking, you'd be amazed at the most viewed courtroom moments. 